The story has become clear in the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament's Pope Leg Seven Ages. We are down to three competitors. We have the clear favorite, Runt. Not the favorite by any particular um, watcher of the game, but just by the game itself. She is, uh, I think she is uh, 92. She's 89 points ahead of the next competitor in the, in, a, in a game where people have been averaging maybe like eight points. Maybe eight's a good average point total. So, um, yeah, Runt's, Runt's probably going to be there at the end. Uh, then we have the two that are runners up, and they are, are, I think, more interesting right now. We have Flesh, who is scoring more, and probably the favorite right now to uh, make the cutoff here in 49. And then we have Giraffe, who is uh, seems to be the one who would be able to give Runt the biggest run for her money uh, once the cutoff happens, but she has to get be able to score more than Flush first, and that's pretty much what we're going going on right now. You can kind of extrapolate how the people are going to interact based on just that small amount of data. Um, what's happened so far, we are in the midst of our production phase, or we just finished it anyway. The Germans built up, the Japanese built up, not very much. They mainly got some money, which put them second place in money, so they're going to be able to start scoring on that again, uh, which will help Flush keep Giraffe down. Um, Germans built up, put some boats down, which might interest you. I don't know why it would. Um, and now it's trade in progress. We are going to be doing that with the Pharaonic Egyptians. Not surprising because the Pharaonic Egyptians, Runt's people, want to be trading with the Portuguese to move them along that track to get them to that crucial 49 to end Giraffe so that Runt can then stomp on Flush. Now Flush I don't think really wants that to happen but he doesn't have any other choice other than to accept the trade maneuver phase and we've had a maneuver. It was the modern state who, if you recall, appeared amidst the Portuguese um, colonials in the New World. Uh, this is Run's empire and she she went after the artifacts. She went after industrial um, uh, industrial revolution in computing with the modern state. She already took the printing from her initial go and this disorder should be gone now. Um, succeeded here? failed there. This marker, in case you're wondering, is a Duel of Ages marker. I'm using that because I can't find my um, the hex for this fellow here, Tomiji Hanaki. Uh, I, I could spend time looking for it, but I just don't have that time right now. So, win and lose there. Flush is finished up a big strike with his Portuguese. He did, uh, he sent out all those submarines that were over here in Portugal and Andalusia down around the Horn of Africa and into the Red Sea as well through the Mediterranean uh, to blow up all these little canoes that uh, <laughs> the Phrenic Egyptians are still paddling around. Here they are, this vibrant culture, and they still have canoes. Um, as you can see, the submarines are much better than canoes. As I talked about last time, submarines are much better than boats, and Flesh has proven that. Um, Whereas uh, Runt, did I say giraffe before? I might have. Whereas Runt was on the surface with these little boats, feeling very powerful with her pharaonic Egyptians. No one could touch them. How could they? They had the most culture, they had the most science, they had decent military, good trade, everything. The submarines, it's not even like it was a sneak attack. They're right there. She saw the buildup. They just went right down and blew them up. Not only did they come out from under the water to destroy to destroy those boats, but they destroyed this card here, the Gamers Guild, which we have seen earlier in the game. Um, this is what's what's kept the uh, Phrygic Egyptians untouchable by cultural attacks. Um, <coughs> Because when you get in a fight, you can destroy someone's culture. I look at it as like a kind of a demoralization, a cross between demoralization and um, you know just the the impact of being beaten up. It can can really do a lot to hurt someone. Um, so anyway, I had enough victory dice to to get rid of that, and that's going to uh, change things if nothing else does. He also even the score in terms of these gears with her. Um, she still has a scientific. I think she's still the the she's the most still the most scientific empire. But a big move by by the Portuguese. 
This is indeed a bloody turn. Giraffe has just sent the Spaniards uh, to take over Portugal and Andalusia. It was kind of a foregone to conclusion that that would happen. Um, I guess Flush could have left his submarines at home uh, to try and defend. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what the game rules about the legality of that. I would probably say that they could use maybe like half of their um, secondary attack, their their ranged attack if they were at home. But really, I mean, it would be very difficult for a submarine on land. Submarines are great in the water. They can go under the water and be on top of the water. But on land, they they're unless they have like a, a digging cone, on the front, they they have a they have difficulty doing much. Um, so yeah, goodbye to the Portuguese's money. I think they lose all their money, and then she gets half of that for her Spaniards, which is good for her. And we'll even round it up to be nice. Um, so that's that, and she has taken the point, the point penalty for double action. She's also going to do a maneuver with her Mongols. So I'll go ahead and resolve that. But this is a very dramatic turn. Whew. Before I leave the Spanish, I forgot to mention Picasso. Here's Pablo Picasso here. He snuck into Gaul and destroyed the um, the German scientists' guild, which is a, a big loss for Rund there. Picasso. In an effective maneuver for the Mongols, they have taken out all the Japanese boats all around Japan and the Japanese coast, Shatsky Rise, Yellow Sea, Sea of Japan, all those boats are gone now. Um, and now they're just full of Mongolian boats. Not only that, but they have, they're about to send three people to um, the labyrinth, three, the three Mongol leaders, Perry Owens, the Iron Pole, and Sheridan. Uh, I haven't talked about this because it hasn't really come up too much, but we're in the modern age now. We have the modern labyrinth thing. So uh, Giraffe went for this armed mugger, I think, last turn. Was it Giraffe? Someone sent a bunch of people. Yeah, it was Giraffe. She sent these two here with her Russians. They were both, um, they both failed. But she feels like maybe these guys will do better, especially since she can see what the symbol is. Uh, part, of the, part of the reason for the failure is that these are colonial folks. All of her leaders are colonial, and they don't get, they don't get the bonus that, that they did before when they were doing colonial labyrinths. But this is, this is a chance for her to pick up three points, which she needs. She needs all the points she can get to catch up to Flush, who's here, he's that's three, plus 10, 13, 14 points ahead of her. And that's going to do it for the round. Not a lot of civilization actions. The Russians civilized for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. They didn't get a lot out of it. Um, I've already done the scoring. She can't tell here. Runt was stuck again here. She can't, she can't move any further until Giraffe makes it to this side. That's the old flipping over thing. Um... Draft didn't score too badly. She scored nine points, I believe. Uh, Spain isn't scoring too much for her, but it did cause the Portuguese to score negative one point, or uh, one less point, or two, it was effectively two less points than they normally uh, normally score. They, they usually score one if you have your homeland, Portugal, but if you don't have your homeland, you lose one, so that's a difference of two. Um, so Flush, especially since he lost the... Uh, I even forgot the Siamese. He he didn't score very well this turn, and Japanese lost their water dominance. So let's see what did he have. I have to refigure it out. One or he had minus one. That's two. He had the most in the world. Second most in the world. No, they had the most in the world. Two four, six minus one is five. Right? Is that right? Yeah. No, no, that's not right because they're Christian. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, he had. He had four total, and the Japanese had one, two, three. Yeah, so eight total for Flush. Giraffe scored nine, so she's scoring more than him. This is a familiar, and this is kind of what I was trying to get to, but I went over a very uh, roundabout way. But if I talk about that, how I went on a roundabout way, it's going to be even more roundabout. Um, this is a familiar place. We, we are at cl approaching the cutout cut off the person who's behind in points ends up gets to the point where they're actually scoring more than the person who's ahead of them in points but it's is it enough more uh, we, I think we've seen both scenarios where it was and wasn't in the past um, 
this is only a one point difference. She has to keep cutting down on, on Flush's, Flush's points in order to catch up. And Runt still is probably going to be against that. Uh, she definitely would love it if if Flush if the cutoff happened now because Flush has like nothing on the board. He has, you know, Japanese who are just stuck in Japan. They can't go anywhere, um, and he has the Portuguese who are totally isolated in the New World, with you know that are kind of divided up. And she has a, a black counter set going after him. So anyway, definitely an exciting round. Lots of lots of violence if if that excites you. Um, we'll see what next round brings next time on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. 7x7 seven seven Ages. I wish I had written that on there. I could just go 7x7 seven seven Ages. And then it would also say 7x7 seven seven Ages to reinforce my words. But uh, it says Animal Farm.